Hey folks, Stronghold Crafter Kev here with another video. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to go through my uh, tutorial continuing with uh, how to make a castle wall out of foam. Yes. And uh, in this particular video, I'm going to show how to uh, assemble the, uh, the whole uh, castle wall, how to glue it all together, uh, step by step. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And um, uh, yes, that's right. Feel free to subscribe if you like to see. I have more, a lot more things coming to the channel. Would want you to miss out. And uh, for more information on my craft, <sighs> this is my website, which is strongholdsoffancy.com. And I'll see you in a bit. Hey, folks. Welcome back to the wall tutorial and in this part we're going to go through the assembly. Um, if you remember this is the the main wall piece and we're going to start with the uh, I'll just say the, let's call it the runner piece okay so what we're going to do is you have to make sure that when you put this together you put it together the right way. Uh, you have to determine which side is going to be your front which is going to be your back wall. Uh, part so what I did was I also marked uh, this side so I know this is where the merlons are going to go on the same side and anyway I'm going to use uh, Loctite Power Grab uh, I got this idea from uh, Lizard Landscapes uh, which does uh, he does uh, polystyrene with um, aquariums for uh, pet lizards and, bl 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 lizards and stuff. Yes, pet lizards. So anyway, you can get it in the uh, caulking tube or you can get it in the uh, squeezable tube. Uh, I will warn you that it will take some time to, to uh, squeeze out. Uh, it's a little bit, but uh, you have more control with how much you can squeeze out. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to squeeze out... Uh, small dab along here on uh, both parts okay let's see if I can get this into the camera alright see just like that thick beads of glue this stuff is thicker than glue uh, or PVA glue or Elmer's glue for, for and then what I do is I take a, a stick or something uh, in this case it's a cut off piece of a skewer and I uh, basically spread the glue out a little bit uh, doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to be um, spread out a little bit so when you press down it will not uh, concentrate in one area too much and this stuff tends to uh, spread out very quickly so if you have too much in one area it will come out the other end so nothing special just spread out a little bit uh, and of course uh, your best to scrape off the excess on the stick there. Now, very carefully uh, press this in place. And because this is thicker, you're going to have to press down a little bit harder than you would if it was just uh, regular PVA glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down like this and I'm just checking to see if any of it squirted through and then I'm going to press down like this. And like I said um, I'm just running my finger along here to make sure 
it feels nice and smooth, nothing's coming out. And I usually uh, try to make sure the, the ends pretty much match up a little bit. If they don't, you have uh, plenty of play with this adhesive because it's not like uh, a fast curing adhesive like uh, crazy glue or so. And it will actually give you a little bit of space between the blocks, which is what you want anyway. You don't want it to be a perfectly uh, flat bond. And what's nice is about this adhesive is it will fill in the cracks, which even makes it a stronger bond, I think. So it doesn't matter if there's like, you know, grooves or nooks and crannies or anything. And, you know, you can always make sure it has a nice uh, finger touch. To it and it's not that um, important that it has to be perfectly level okay just so have that in mind and okay so we're gonna pause the camera and let this dry hold on all right this has been glued on it's nice and firm I would recommend uh, at least four it's eight hours for it to dry. I mean, you can just like glue it and let it sit overnight and you're good to go there. Um, and this is going to be actually a little bit wider than this, so we want the overhang there anyway on the inside of the castle wall. Now comes time for the uh, trim piece. So, I'm gonna, like before, I'm going to take the lock tight power grab and I'm going to place it on here. This is a little bit trickier uh, with putting on the adhesive. And I'll explain why in just a little bit here. Now as before you want to uh, along these little areas here uh, you want to spread the adhesive out a little bit thinner in the really uh, tight areas here. You're not going to need a whole lot in the in the small uh, rounded parts there. So it's just uh, a judgment call how that uh, works out and make sure you hold on to the uh, thicker parts are doing this so we will <clears throat> mm, excuse me. All right, now make sure you have it on the Merlon side. So, very carefully, you're just going to place it on very gently at first until you're happy with where it's going to be. Okay, sorry, I'm off camera there. And you know, I, I barely pressed it on and it's like holding on. I love it. Okay, now. Hold the wall with one hand and the other hand gently press uh, where the uh, trim pieces are. Okay, now. I don't know if you can pick this up or not, but very 
loosely here. We've got some, there we go. We have some beads of, uh, of adhesive that came through. So, what I'm going to do is take a paper towel, uh, wipe off the toothpick, not toothpick, but skewerier, and I'm going to take the point of it and very gently uh, scrape out those uh, excess parts. So I'll do that and I'll get back to, with the next part. Hold on. Okay, now I've gotten all the all the part that, that came out in between the cracks here. Now, uh, in here, some more uh, kind of seeped through, which is fine. Uh, because of that, that means it got all the way through to the edge and we can scrape out that excess and that'll make a really strong bond for even the thin parts. So I'll scrape that out and I'll get back with you. Hold on. Alright, now that uh, we've taken all the uh, excess out of the uh, Loctite Power Grab, uh, I want to point out that it doesn't have to be perfect. It, as long as you get most of it out or a good bit of it out, it won't really matter. It's going to be painted over anyway, but I'm a little picky about uh, excess glue you know, spewing through the uh, stonework there. So once you're happy with it being pressed against uh, the wall like you want it to be, you want to also make sure that when you have it down flat this way that the uh, trim piece is pretty much, uh, you know, flat with uh, the uh, runner part, more or less. Um, so we'll let that dry and we'll go to the next step. Hold on. All right. That part is on there nice and tight and dry. And uh, you really want to make sure, I mean, this part here, yeah, it'll, it'll cure. It'll be fine, flat on flat. But this being a, a side piece, you want it to be firmly glued and dry uh, because it's got to be very steady and stable to handle the Merlon section. Okay, so we'll go real quick with this and show you how it turns out. Like before, um, we're just going to put this on here in sections. And use our handy tool to spread it out a little bit. Trade secret. Don't tell anybody. Now, this part here, it's like everything else, gently put it on there at first, and then we'll slowly apply the pressure. What's nice is uh, if your polystyrene isn't totally uh, level you can uh, compensate with the, uh, the Loctite power grab. It's like a, uh, in some ways I think of it as as a unexpected uh, filler if you will. You know that's not really what its purpose is. So Got her on there. She's looking good. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure and, of course, clean it out. 
So I will finish this up and show you how it turned out. Hold on. All right, we have it all together now. Uh, and I'm really happy how it turned out. I hope I didn't ramble too much with explaining uh, the assembly process of the whole thing. Uh, one, one thing to keep in mind, uh, be very careful when you press down with your fingers, if you can fit your fingers in there. Uh, all you need is you know, a fingertip to do so. When you go to press the uh, upper parts here, be very careful how you press down. I say that because because this is so narrow, it'd be very easy if you press it the wrong way too quickly. You could break off part of your uh, Merlon and then uh, you're left with uh, either you break it off and keep it off or you try to glue it back on. Anyway, um, that's all I can really say. Uh, all we have to do now is uh, do some final detailing and... That's it.